What's a Merlin theme park like in Germany? Let's spend a day at Hyde Park Resort to find out. This park has one of Europe's biggest wooden roller coasters, Colossus Kampf der Giganten, as well as two really cool B&M coasters. We'll also experience some fun dark rides, a couple of familiar roller coasters, as well as the theming and landscaping around the park. So let's drop in to Hyde Park. Good morning from Hyde Park Resort here in Soltau, Germany. It's my first visit here and we've got a few big rides here, most notably the huge Intamin Prefab Woody Colossus. We've got a couple of awesome looking B&Ms as well. So really excited to come and explore this park today. So come and join me for a tour around Hyde Park. So we've got some Ghostbusters action down here for the Ghostbusters 5D. You're going to come back to this later, but I'm curious by the slightly not identical Ghostbusters music that they're playing. Like it's like some dodgy hooky version. Well, today's first stop is Colossus, this huge Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster. Had some recent retrack work too. I am so excited to get on this. El Toro is my favourite Woody of all time, so interesting to see how this compares. Let's go ride Colossus. So my first ride on Colossus there, and that was really good. We were towards the back, so some really nice drag over the hills. The drop was pretty solid. Um, the airtime hills is where it, really where it shines. You do get some really nice drag over those hills and some nice airtime. Um, not full blown ejector, I would say, um, but it is worth noting that it is only still 11 o'clock in the morning, so it's still running quite slow. And I think by the afternoon, once that's tearing around the course i think that airtime is really going to be a lot more fierce but on the whole really impressed with that i love these intamin prefab woodies and obviously the uh the demon you go through there is a really awesome uh theming piece as well so we'll come back later get some more rides and really kind of cement an opinion but yeah pretty impressed with the with the first go on that Well, Flug der Demonen is up next. This is a B&M wing coaster. Flight of the Demon on a 10 minute queue. So let's go and give this a go. This looks awesome. Look at some of the, uh, the landscaping around the ride here. Well, Flug der Damona was a really solid wing coaster there. We rode at the left, at the back. It was quite forceful in places. The, the wing under drop was decent. The inversions all hit really well. I would say it's quite compact though, so it doesn't feel like you really build up a head of steam at any one point. As soon as you can't sort of get going, you're turning or inverting back on yourself or something. But I thought that was really good. I'm gonna try and get back to the right-hand side later. Cues on park don't generally seem to be that bad today. And um, because it's a Sunday, so um, expect it to be reasonably busy, but it's, it's not horrendous. So we've got a whole bunch of coasters in this area. So I think we're gonna go and head and do Crake next for some B&M dive action, and then maybe grab some lunch. So Creek might be one of the smaller dive coasters, but that was really good fun. The drop into the Kraken's mouth was awesome. Dive drops are always fun anyway. I love the water splash and the, how spectacular it looks as you're dangling from the Immelman looking down on it all. 
Then you just hit an airtime hill. That actually had a really forceful drop on the other end. And you hit the brake run. It's a very short and simple ride, but it does everything it needs to do really well. And I quite enjoyed that. So looking forward to going back for another ride later on. Now we're gonna go grab a bite to eat. So I had a cheeky schnitzel and beer for lunch, and now we're just having a little chill on this panoramic miniature monorail thing while we let the food go down. So let's get some nice views from up here. A Merlin park with a pirate themed splash battle. Not seen that before. So they also have a little Peppa Pig section here at Hyde Park. And another look at the Crake Station building here. Awesome castle vibes. Hi, I'm Stephen Repertoire, and you should like this video. So we were gonna ride Scream, that big drop tower in the background there. Unfortunately, it seems to be down for maintenance, although it does look like it's testing. So maybe we'll head back shortly. And Scream has reopened, so let's go ride a spinning Intamin drop tower. This should be fun. Well, Scream is a huge drop tower with some fantastic views as you rotate around at the top then, and a drop was really forceful. And it just felt like it just kept going and going and going before you eventually clipped the brakes at the bottom and came to a stop. But yeah, really impressed with that. I do enjoy a good Intamin drop tower. Intamin just do lots of good stuff, don't they? This guy's just munching on a bit of cake, look. Well, Flug de Damona has dropped to a zero minute queue, so we're gonna go and do the right hand side, yep. see how uh, this rides in comparison to the left. All spooky down here. Well, Flug de Damona on the right hand side was a much improved experience on the left. Uh, you obviously get the wing over drop, which is always cool, but just about every element, it felt like it was more forceful, like you were getting moved over the inversion rather than underneath it. And yeah, really awesome. I love as well how you, uh, interact with all those sort of Transylvanian buildings and stuff in the area. It's a really nicely themed ride area. And yeah, that's a really solid wind coaster. I don't think it's quite Phoenix level, but certainly up in the conversation. As you can see, they're also doing their preparation for their Halloween event. And this is a brand new maze for Halloween 2024. Excrypta. Well, wish us luck. We're about to join the queue for Toxic Garden. Apparently one of the roughest Vekoma SLCs in operation and it does give off some Poison Ivy vibes as well, so hopefully she's a bit gentle on us. Toxic Garden does what SLCs do, and that is send you through a bunch of inversions quite uncomfortably, quite rattly, and punishing your shoulders. That's being said, I don't think that was as bad as some that I've ridden. And actually some of the theming with the mad plants and toxic vegetation is all quite cool. I wouldn't ride it again though. And up next, we're riding the Monan Gruft. So this is a new for 2024 dark ride, obviously based around Flug de Damonen, or at least the sort of the backstory behind it. So yeah, this is quite interesting. So let's go give it a ride. So Demona's Gruff was an okay dark ride. It plays into a lot of the Merlin tropes. There's a crypt. There was a sort of slightly Wicker Man-ish pre-show about rituals and stuff. And then we went down into the catacombs. There were moments that were quite good. I think when it was dark and it was mainly audio focused, those moments were quite tense because you were sort of expecting something to happen. It's just not a lot of things really did. There's quite a cool section as you went through some like creepy cages that were hanging from the ceiling. They were only being lit, lit up very slightly and subtly. Um, there were actually some random bits that reminded me almost of League the Hollander at Efteling and it was quite atmospheric based. 
I just felt like it needed to be a little bit longer and it lacked a bit of a finale. But otherwise, it's a fine dark ride, but not something you want to queue for more than, say, 15, 20 minutes for. So I just wanted to have a bit of a chat about the general look and feel of the park. It is quite nicely put together. As you can see from this bridge we're on here, like almost all of the park is really well presented. There's some nice steaming in spots too, and I think the audio really adds to the atmosphere. I think Hyde Park is very well put together. Been quite impressed so far. Now this is what you call an old school ride station. So just ridden Big Loop, a classic Vekoma MK1200. Four inversions, the double loop, the double corkscrew, a very familiar layout to many of you, I'm sure. And it was okay. The trains do have those spine compression restraints, which if you're anything above about five foot eight, a bit uncomfortable. But other than that, I thought I rode okay. Uh, the corkscrew's a bit rattly and it got a bit janky towards the end, but yeah, a one and done, but it's still good to see plenty of these old classics from the 80s still operating. Is it me or is this logo a bit reminiscent of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory back when it was at Alton Towers? I think Merlin may have borrowed their Wicker Man designer for the uh, Colossus theming and logo. And there's a look at all the timber used just to support the brake run there. It is mad what goes into building a wooden coaster of this scale, isn't it? So we're heading back for round two of Colossus Kampf der Giganten. It says it's a 20 minute queue, but most things have been slightly less in the last couple of hours. So hopefully this will be a little bit shorter than that, but either way, it's gonna be good to get another ride on this massive wooden coaster. Now that it should have warmed up a little bit. It's been a lovely hot autumn day here, so the track has really warmed up throughout the day and that was tearing around. So it's not quite El Toro levels, admittedly. It doesn't quite have that absolute ferocity and madness. It's a bit more controlled, but it's still a really good roller coaster. I think probably the best wooden coaster in Europe, certainly that I've ridden. I'd certainly put it above the likes of Boulder, which is the other prefab we have here in Europe. Yeah, it's a really good roller coaster with some really good theming. Now we've got another one up next, Desert Rita, or Desert Race, which is Rita Queen of Speed, but with a helicopter. We'll go and check that out in a sec. Well, that helicopter is actually the odd cabin. That's quite cool. <laughs> well, Blue Rita, or Desert Race, was pretty decent. It's obviously exactly as you expect. If you've ridden Rita hundreds of times as I have, you know exactly what's going on there, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, and actually nice to have a launch here because everything else so far has been lift hill based. And the helicopter op cabin was really cool too. I guess if you've got to sit in an op cabin all day, you might as well make it a helicopter. Well, we ain't afraid of no ghosts, so we're gonna go and ride Ghostbusters 5D. Let's see how this compares to the Ghostbusters ride at Motion Gate Dubai. It's a Merlin Park, so does a shipping container. Don't trust him. He climbed me. He climbed me. So Ghostbusters 5D, that was a pretty fun ride experience. So in terms of theming wise, I mean, Motion Gate Dubai have it be absolutely hands down with their version. But in terms of the ride system itself, I would take that all day long. Uh, quite a responsive shooting system. It's 4D, so you have a much more realistic, it's got that kind of Spider-Man vibe at, uh, at Universal, but with ghosts and shooting, instead of just kind of watching the action that's going on. So yeah, quite responsive. A bit of a weird storyline going on. The main ghost seemed to be the genie from Aladdin. I'm not sure why. And there wasn't much that it really tied in to the Ghostbusters franchise other than the name. In fact, I have a feeling they pay for the name and the name alone because even the music is a slightly odd key changed version of the Ghostbusters music. But all in all, really fun ride, definitely worth doing.
Well, there's about an hour and a half's worth of ride time left today. The park is starting to empty out quite a bit and queue times are dropping down significantly. One of the major roller coasters, or in fact the only major roller coaster we haven't ridden yet, is Bob Arn, which is their Mac bobsled. It's been on a high queue all day, but it's now currently dropped down to 10 minutes. So that's where we're heading next. Proof that cats will sit anywhere. So we've just ridden Baban there. A very juddery experience, but a very fun one too. Lots of fairly forceful helices, including one almost completely in the dark, which was quite fun. And then we ended with quite a large lift hill just to get us back into the station, which was interesting, but on the whole, pretty good fun. But I'm not sure how many times I could ride that because it is like sitting on a washing machine. So despite an advertised closing time of 7 p.m., it appears that they actually close all the roller coasters at 6 p.m. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing. You usually expect the main rides to be open until the park closes, but we just went to get on Crake. It's on the app, advertised as five minute queue, but it's completely closed. And the member of staff said that roller coasters close at six. So we're gonna have a quick look at Colossus just because we did see riders on it just now, but I imagine we're probably gonna get the same there. And we'll see if there's anything else open to do. Closing coasters an hour early. What a bunch of anchors. We have a sad pile of bears. Well, thank you for joining for what was a predominantly good day at Hyde Park. It started and ended a little bit frustratingly. We'll come to that soon. I think overall, they've got a pretty good ride selection here. I think Colossus is the standout, followed by those two B&Ms, Flug de Domainen and Crake. They're all really, really enjoyable rides. I think a lot of the theming and presentation of the park was really nice. And overall, I'd say it's been a really good day. What I would say is, you know, we've come on a fairly quiet day and we've just about managed to cram everything in. We've only had re-rides on Colossus and Flug de Domain. And other than that, we've had one ride on everything. Despite that, we've still missed the Rapids, the Log Flume, a couple of the smaller junior coasters, uh, the Monorail, etc. So there are, are certainly more rides here to do. So it is a challenge to cram everything in in one day. And I think if you came here on a slightly busier day, you could find yourself missing out on a few bits. So do bear that in mind if you are planning a trip here. Now in terms of the start and the end of the day, now the weirdness with the security at the beginning of the day, who first of all told me I couldn't film at all on my GoPro, but then implied that it was only on ride, which is fine, I expected that anyway. And secondly, I literally took a selfie just as I got in the park to post on social media. And some security came over and was really angry that I took a photo and it was like, I want a theme park, mate. People are gonna take photos at theme parks. So that was odd. And then this situation at the end of the day where the park closes at seven, but they closed all the rides at six. Not just that, but they closed all the ride shops as well. So they weren't even taking money from you, which was strange. To me, if you're closing your rides at six o'clock, then you're, you, as far as I'm concerned, your park is shut at six because there's nothing to do, literally nothing. So anyway, apart from that complaint at the end of the day, I mean, my overall feeling here was that it's a nice park, but that they, maybe it's not managed the best. I mean, operations were mainly good, but there were definitely a few of those Merlin frustrations thrown in there. But it is a park I'd recommend. I think it's a lovely park to walk around. You've got some good headline attractions. So this is park one of six German parks I'm visiting between now and the end of the season. They'll all be in one playlist. I'm gonna start that now. That'll be up on the screen. And you can also check out my vlog from Alton Towers and Thought Park's Oktoberfest events, which happened recently. Thanks very much for watching and I shall catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.